Hi there, welcome back to Heard of a CFP. My name is Matthew Coyle. Today we're gonna to talk about social security myths that people believe that just aren't true. Let's dive in. All right, Social Security, it is a very important program for many retirees around the country, and uh, it's often a very misunderstood program for many retirees around the country. You know, I've been doing this for a while now, and I'm still very surprised at the number of people, educated people, professional people, uh, who don't really understand how Social Security works, uh, where the values come from, or even some basics about the program. So I thought I'd just list five things that I have seen over the years that people often get wrong about Social Security, and we will talk about right from the bat, number one, how your benefit is calculated and what your benefit represents. Social Security is often thought of as a retirement savings program. It really isn't. It is basically a pension and transfer program that is based not on how much you pay into the system, but how much you've earned over your working life. Now that particular benefit you will receive replaces on average, according to AARP, about 40% of your pre-retirement earnings once you actually hit Social Security based on when you take it. Now that can vary, but it's about on average 40% of your pre-retirement income. The rest is up to you through your own retirement savings programs like 401ks, taxable accounts, 403bs, IRAs, whatever, Roth IRAs, fill in the blank. But Social Security at its heart is really not a retirement savings program, it's a pension and transfer program. And that pension and transfer payment that you get is based on the career earnings that you have, not how much you've paid into the system, is not based on how much you pay in. So that's one misconception I see quite a bit. And when that benefit is calculated, it tends to replace a slightly higher percentage of earnings for those who are lower income uh, earners through their career, and a slightly lower uh, benefit for people who are higher income uh, people during their working career. So on average, again, it replaces about 40% of your pre-retirement earnings for most people. Um, and it's not based on what you put in, it's based on your career earnings, over a lifetime and uh, that is the probably the number one misconception I see about Social Security is how the benefit is calculated and how it's weighted. Alright number two my Social Security benefits will never be taxable when I retire. That is a myth. It's not guaranteed they will be but they can be. Up to 85% of your benefit that you receive from Social Security can be taxable, income taxable by the government and possibly the state level as well if you have income outside of your normal retirement income that comes from Social Security. So if you plan on having a side hustle in retirement or perhaps you want to have a side gig of some kind, you have a hobby that you earn income from, whatever it is, you may want to delay your filing if you have income that is, and I've got the levels right here because I'm going to do it from memory. If you are a single filer with twenty-five dollars to $34,000 of income and or a joint filer of thirty-two to 44000 up to half of your benefits can be taxable if you have extra income outside of Social Security. Above those levels, you may be taxed on up to 85% of your Social Security benefits while you are in retirement. Okay, so it does, it does factor in. You can be taxed on your Social Security income. A lot of people believe that you can't. I think where this comes from is that up until 1984, um, you were not tax taxed on Social Security benefits. It was not legal to do that. Starting in 1984, Reagan changed those rules, and uh, we now have benefits um, that can be taxable up to 85%, depending on your outside income and retirement. So up until 84, you weren't taxed. After 84, you were. So that's probably where this comes from. And yes, you can be taxed. Um, obviously, we build these into our plans when we look at uh, clients' outside income, and quite often we find it's beneficial for them to delay taking it if, uh, if they think they're going to earn extra income outside of that. So yes, you can be taxed. The fact that you can't be taxed, that's a myth. So be aware of that when you do your plans or talk to your planner, whoever you work with. All right, myth number three. I will lose my benefits permanently if I continue to work into retirement. This is also a myth. We're gonna piggyback off of number two here for a bit when it comes to income. You will not, repeat, not lose your benefits permanently if you continue to work. And again, I'm gonna go off uh, the Social Security website here just so I don't get the numbers wrong. In 2022, your benefit is reduced by $1 for every $2 in income you have above $19,560, okay? If you hit the full retirement age in the current year, you the, the earnings test essentially goes away. There is no benefit reduction, okay? Now, Social Security also adjusts upward so that you don't have a reduction when you hit full retirement age. Now, for most people, full retirement age will be like 67. For guys like me who are now 44, the Gen X or, uh, group, we're probably gonna be 69 or 70, and that's fine. Um, but there is no permanent benefit reduction if you choose to work into retirement. That is a myth, and I don't know where it comes from, but people still believe it, and I hear it quite often. So if you choose to work, once you hit full retirement age, okay, there is no earnings test once you hit full retirement age 
and that is just the way they do it. Um, so I hope I don't keep hearing this myth a lot, but I do hear a lot. There is no benefit reduction if you continue to work into retirement. Once you get full retirement age, they do not really uh, reduce your benefits if you choose to work. Now that doesn't change the fact that your income, uh, Social Security income might be taxable. That is still true, but there is no benefit reduction if you choose to work. Uh, once you hit full retirement age. So once you hit full retirement age, there is no earnings test and there is no benefit reduction. So that myth officially is not true. All right, myth number four. You should always wait until 70 to collect your check. This is one that I hear a lot. And um, yes, it is true that you get a benefit bump when you wait till age 70 because you're getting delayed credits and the government doesn't have to pay you. So naturally, you would expect a bigger check if you wait till 70. However, it may or may not be best in the interest of your financial plan to do that, sometimes it's actually beneficial to take at 62. Sometimes it's beneficial to take at 70. Sometimes it's just fine to take it at full retirement age. It depends, it depends, it depends, all right? So if you are going to spend a certain amount of money that you require an extra bump in income from Social Security and you don't want to draw that from your investments because you don't want to deplete your invested balance, then you probably should take it a little earlier. If you have a much higher retirement balance, um, on average, you probably want to wait till age 70 because you don't have to take it, you can wait. You can use your other investments maybe that are more tax advantaged. Um, so it really does depend, and this is where a financial planner can be very helpful here in helping you determine when to take that check, when not to take it. Quite often, if you have, on average, I find if you have a lower retirement balance, it's best to take it at your regular retirement age or even maybe a little sooner. If you have a fairly high retirement balance and you've been a high income earner, you've been able to save and you've been fortunate there, um, you could probably wait till 70 be just fine. But it really does depend on your financial plan. It depends on your stand, uh, st standing as far as for your, what you need in life, as far as your spending. Um, so the answer is not always wait till 70. In fact, sometimes waiting till 70 can force you to draw from your investments which can deplete your balance, which means your money might not last long in retirement. So um, there is a balance there and a financial planner can help you figure that out. Um, but the myth that you always wait till 70 is just that, it is a myth. And finally, myth number five, my spouse is not entitled to a benefit because he or she did not work a day in their life. This is false. If you are a married couple, um, regardless, male, female, it doesn't matter, and your primary earning spouse files for their benefit, you as a spouse, regardless of the number of days you worked, are entitled to a spousal benefit equal to half of the primary earner's benefit themselves. Now, the reason they do this is because, well, it's very simple, actually. We don't want to punish people who stay, uh, choose to stay home and raise children, for example. Um, example, a personal example, my mother did not work. My father worked for 50 years. When my father filed for his benefit upon retirement, my mother also filed for a benefit equal to half of his. This is because the Congress and the Treasury, of course, don't want to discriminate against those who choose to stay uh, at home and raise children, which is, of course, a social good. We want to promote that. And so because of that, the spouse can earn a benefit equal to half of what the primary earning spouse gets. Now, slight caveat on this. There is a rule on this you, you want to be aware of. You cannot get that benefit, a spousal benefit, until your primary earning spouse files for theirs. So you can't just file whenever you want to for a spousal benefit. The, the primary earning spouse has to file first, then the spouse can file for half the benefit um, after that. So it is a myth that spouses who don't work do not get anything. They do get something to get a spousal benefit. Um, and I uh, know a lot of people and have run into a lot of people who don't understand this rule. Um, again, the only rule is that the primary earner has to file first, and then you can do that. But um, So that is uh, my top five. Thank you again for watching. I appreciate the fact that the most valuable asset you have is your time. And take care of yourself, take care of your family, and I will see you again very soon. Thank you.